Hi again, um, for those who watched what I think is the first of three videos in this series uh, you would see me remove the carbs from my 1984 Goldwing Aspen Cade um, if you did watch it you'll see I've now moved from the garage into the shed, a bit warmer and a bit more comfortable place to work the object of this video is to show how to strip the carbs down and clean them out again this is as, as per for the first video this is all something I'm doing for the first time so it's not, not something I've done before so um, we just see how it goes as we, uh, as we go along okay first job I'm going to do is take this top cover off may not need to come off, I'm going to take it off and clean it down anyway and then I'm going to take these covers off and uh, give them a bit of a uh, clean down so that's me first two jobs Okay, as you can see, I've removed the top cover, removed these three covers, removed all but one of the uh, screws here, deliberately so I can show you what's under here as you undo it. If you just hold it down gently with one hand or one finger, take the last screw out. There is going to be a spring comes out there, but it is quite a long spring. There you go. So you expect that to come out when you take the lid off. Okay, now in each each of these you'll have there you go with the needle. You see there's a little loop on there, and if you look carefully, it's a little heart, there's a little circle there. When you put it back together, that loop must line up with that circle. There you go, so it goes in there. Okay, so the first thing I'm checking now is just to make sure none of these are split. Um, I've checked the other three there all fine, that one looks good as well. I um, don't know how well you can see in the middle of that, I don't think you can, uh, so I shan't explain that bit. You'll notice I'm storing these so that the diaphragms are not actually uh, laying flat so they don't uh, deform. Okay, what I'm going to do next is under these bands, take the four uh, import ports off. Okay, so that's all the ports taken off. What I probably didn't uh, make clear earlier on is as I take these bits off, I'm cleaning them up as I take them off. Okay, I've now turned the whole lot upside down. You'll notice I've put a black tray underneath it just to catch any odds and ends of petrol that might be left in it. When I turned it upside down, um, this rubber bong fell from it. So I don't quite know where that's come from and I don't actually think it's part of it, but uh, we'll keep it just in case. Okay, so my next uh, intention now is to take the um, fuel pots off the bottom and uh, go from there. Okay, all the covers off, so you now see the floats and the the main jets. It's obviously the main jets are my main uh, thing I want to check. Uh, probably don't have to, but I'm making sure as I take these items off, I'm keeping all four carbs separate, so everything goes back on the same same carbs probably not necessary but uh, the way I like to do it okay I've zoomed in a little bit for this one I'm going to take the the float out but be warned got a small pin runs through it which holds it in that just slides out but there's a small valve underneath there you need to be careful of so I'll show you as I do it the pin just just use your hand for the pin don't don't grab it with pliers pull that pin out there you go and then as you lift this flow out very carefully because on the back end you have that flow out there if you can see this that literally just comes off the end let's move that down a bit so that's the float, that's it, needle in place it just comes off the end of there so if you should take it off and it falls off you know it just literally slides back on like, like so okay so that's the floats out, You, I don't know if you can see but there are some little puddles of uh, fuel in each of these so I'm going to go and dispose of that correctly and uh, back in a minute okay next thing I'm going to do is take out the main, the two main jets out of each pot so that's one there one there okay what I'm going to do for the sakes of the big ones I'm going to use a 7mm 
spanner. There we go, that's now moving. So I'm going to go around and loosen all those on all four. Okay, so I've removed all of those. There we go. Uh, you'll see it has a series of holes in it, obviously, plus there's a hole down the middle. I'm going to go through and make sure they're all clean um, using a very thin piece of wire. Um, now, the second, the second uh, one, and get on now with a screwdriver. I've loosened them slightly, so that's it. They will now unscrew and come out. So, I'm going to go around and take those four out as well. Okay, so I've taken both jets out of here. Um, there they are. So the idea is now when you've got those, make sure they're nice and clean on the outside. Make sure, a little bit out of focus, but make sure you can run something straight down through the middle. And make sure all these little holes on the outside are also clear. What I've used is a piece of speaker wire. Um, just individual strands of wire just to get through the holes. I've also taken out this one here. Let me show you that on the other one. There you go. So it'll be this one here. You see, I've taken out all that one, and that consists of very small filter behind as well. So make sure the hole down the centre is clear, and make sure the filter is clear as well. Okay, right, I've put the jets back in, they're all clean. I've used this spray. Um, while using the spray, I've also used a mask and uh, gloves as well. Make sure you don't get any in your eyes, your skin, because it, it's uh, very irritant. Um, the smaller jets, the idle jets, I've replaced with brand new ones. Nothing wrong with the old ones once they were cleaned, but I have upped the size slightly. They had size 35. I've now put size 40s in just to allow a little bit more fuel uh, on the idle. I've still kept all the components separate into their own uh, pots so and they're not muddled up and they all go back onto the same pots. Okay, I don't want to teach anybody to suck eggs, but obviously the more time you spend cleaning all your items, the better result you're going to have. Um, just one point, with the floats, when you take them off, just it sounds might sound weird, but just check the weight of them, and then if there's any holes in these floats, they're only plastic, if there's any holes in them, they could well get fuel in them. If they get heavier, then obviously they're not going to close as well as they should, or as quick as they should. So that's one, one little point just to uh, look out for there. Okay, I'm going to put this one back together. I'm not going to bore you showing you all four. I'm just going to show you the one. And now obviously the um, other three are exactly the same. Okay, the little valve that goes onto the uh, float. Just check the ends. Make sure the ends nice and sharp. Make sure there's no ring dug into it. Again, that can uh, cause problems with opening and closing. Okay, so if you can see this, I don't know how the focus is going to be. Foul just clips on there. Make sure the foul fits nicely into its hole. Once it's into its hole, don't force it in, that's it. Once it's in, put your pin back through to hold everything in place. Sorry if my hands are in the way a little bit here. There you go, just push that back in till it comes to a stop. That's that back on. Lid back on, and now we're gonna screw down. Okay, that's that one back on, obviously screwed down now. I've reused the seals that were in there, they didn't look too bad, uh, so I've reused those and obviously just pinched the, um, the bolts tight. Okay, I've got to show you a before and after photo, uh, video of the uh, covers. You'll see you've got all this green gunk in here. So that's obviously before it's clean. Okay, and that's the after, that's after the cleaning. Uh, now I'm not quite sure what it's for, but there's this little jet here, or it's not a jet actually. 
screws in the side here comes out the right at the very bottom in there um, so I'm not sure what it's for but that on the end of this was really really dirty so I'm glad I took that out to clean it so that's just going to go back in there and screw in um, but aside, I'm not I'm not actually sure what that does okay so that's all 40 float chambers back together um, now, now we're going to do the top halves I know when I started this I literally just flipped the whole lot over horizontally so if I do that then I know I'm, again I'm keeping all the same parts to the same uh, same pots okay these have all been cleaned out as well with contact spray so these are going to go back in first making sure that the out bit here goes into the little cut out there so what I'm going to do is just make sure put that in nice and carefully so as not to damage the needle trying to do it without getting in the way of the camera there we go make sure that's in it's not in there you go come in and look at that okay so that goes in and as I say make sure the diaphragm fits into that uh, cut out there so that's that part done okay we've now got the spring and the cover to put back on you'll notice a little uh, cut out there which again needs to line up to where the diaphragm fits into the casing the spring of course is going to go down the middle and you'll see on the top the spring will fit obviously onto that little cut out there so that's literally going to go like that it's not too difficult just try and line the spring up a bit push it down when you've got it lined up one screw in just to hold it in place there we go done get the other three screws in and uh, then do the other three pots okay so that's all four carbs now all put back together so all that's left to do now is put the cover back on screw that down and then put the uh, the legs on each of the outlets there I'm thinking actually it might be easier to leave the outlets off until the whole lot is back on the bike and then put them on it might make it slightly easier but I'm going to do it in reverse order to what I took it off so I am going to put them back on and uh, yeah see how it goes okay that's the top cover back on and that's one of the out outlet ports back on uh, not done up tight just pushed back on okay a little tip uh, that I've done um, a couple of weeks ago when I replaced the choke cable the now way you'll see it I've cut I've drilled a hole in there I drilled that when it was actually on the bike I was able to get down with a drill and drill it just in case you can't see it I'll put a bit of white tissue behind it you can see got the hole cut out there now if I was to turn the whole lot round you'll see I'll zoom in a little bit that more or less um, lines up directly with where the choke cable connects so when this is on the bike you can actually get a screwdriver down in there and release the choke cable okay that's the end of this video if it's helped anybody I'm, I'm glad a uh, third video is going to be uh, putting it back on the bike if you haven't seen the first video the first video was actually uh, disconnecting it and getting it off the bike thanks for watching